Greetings, students. My name is Ayram Kajwa. I'm working at the Tanzania College at the Mlomati campus under the course Information Technology and Computer Science, teaching the subject System Analysis and Designs, Level 4. So today we are going to focus on that subject, but a specific topic. The name of the topic is going to be Analyzing Information Systems. I'm going to represent it now on the board why do we need to analyze information systems? So our main topic today What is information analysis? So as a system analyst we are titled with collection of data analyzing of data, representation of data, then comes the part of designing your system. Today we are going to analyze the system that we have collected and design a model. So we analyze information so that we can have detail of what we have collected. That is why we are coming to the topic analyzing information systems. But I'm going to focus much on the module of data models. So when we're looking at data models, a model is something that's represented by a graph or an object, but it has to have a meaning as you're going to represent it. So in system analysis and design, we have something that we usually use from programming from level two up to level four, because system analysis and designs goes hand in hand with programming. I'm just going to focus on a model called entity relation Ship diagram. It's an entity which we simplify it as an ERD. So hand in hand we'll be speaking about an inner ERD instead of saying entity relationship diagram. What is an entity? An entity represents a thing. It can be a building. It can be a person, so we just say it's an entity. We don't go say it's a human, it's a building, or whatever. We just say it's an entity because now we are using models instead of real life buildings or real life people. So an entity has its own structure. Then we're going to look at the structure of an entity. There is not much of changes from level two, level three, level four, when you're looking at the structure of an entity. But now we are going to bear in mind, we are going to introduce a word called cardinalis. Because in level three, we just look at the structure where we call it a class diagram. This is going to be called a class diagram. So a class diagram must have a name, and of course, a method, then you have what you call attributes or qualities of the class diagram. So now the changes which comes to level four in system analysis is that a class diagram does have a method or a function. For example, if we are going to take an entity which is car, a car has its name. If you are going to take an OT, for example, a car has its characteristics. It must have wheels. It must have a color. It must have a model. Then you come to the functions or the method. The method of a car is just to transport us. But now, when we are doing data modeling, we are going to take out a part of a method and focus much on the attributes. Because now we are not interested much in the method of an entity, but much on the attributes because we are going to focus much in relationships. So with the name and attribute, now if we are going to take just an example, creating a structure of an entity, let's take an entity, let's say it's a building. So what kind of a building? Can use an example, a shop. 
So there are key ways that I said you are going to introduce. We are going to introduce cardinality. Cardinality, which is the relationship between that entity and another entity. So a building, now it has its name, which is a shop. It must have a key, which we call it a primary key. It uniquely identifies that building. We know that most buildings or shops are identified by their names, but we have spa in Malila and we have spa in Nail Spray, we have spa all over Mpumalanga. How do they differentiate that? You cannot say spa of Malila when you are designing an entity. You have to give it a primary key. For example, the one in Nail Spray, we can call it shop 001, meaning already 001 will uniquely identify the one in Nail Spray. If you're going to have another one in Malilani, it's going to be 002. Why do we say it's a primary key? It must uniquely identify that shop. Because if you say spa and keep quiet, everyone knows that spa is all over. So now if you say it's a primary key, it must be 001. This number is already taken. The next spa must have 002, 003, up until the last one. How do you know this is a primary key when it comes to an entity of a human? We all have IT numbers. So an IT number uniquely identifies me. It's not possible to share IT numbers. Should it happen, that's why they call it, it's a fraud, because we cannot have the same ID numbers. And these days, when you're going to take a smart card, you know even before we're using fingerprints, but by then, we have to put it in the ink and place it on the paper. Now they say we must use biometric. Why? Because it will quickly reach your fingerprint and take your ID at the same time. So that is why we all have primary keys, which is our ID numbers. Focusing on that, so we said we are not going to look at the method. Now we can look at where is shop number 001. That is going to be the address. Then you'll know, with, oh, this is part of nail spray. If that is the address, then now we want to know who is the manager. And you can list all the attributes of that shop. Then we have our own structure of an entity. Moving forward, we can take also an example of a course where you're going to have a course code, a course lecturer, a course venue. As a student, you know that you have to attend all your courses. So now we are going to look at relationships and how do we describe them. So on the part of the relationships, we are going to focus on the types of relationships. Remember, you're not talking about relationships with people, you're talking about relationships with entities. An entity represents a person. So if you're going to take an example of an entity from now on, I'm going to use much the structure instead of words. So if you're going to take an entity called cause and another entity, which is going to be a lecturer. So this is a person, this one is just a cause. But these two will have to be related. So we are going to make this use of these two entities as examples of explaining what types of relationships that we have. So the relationships that are presented by entities, we have what we call a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay? I'm going to write it in full. So we are going to represent it in two ways. We have what we call the cross foot notation. And of course, the chance notation. So the reason they say it's a chance notation is because it was discovered by a Chinese man. So a crow's foot notation, it's, a crow is a bird. So you'll see the way it's represented as you're going to represent it, like from the one-on-one -on -one relationship, which is number one. So a one-on-one -on -one under crow's foot, we're going to have something like this. This is one-to-one. -one. When we're coming to the chain, it's going to be one is to one. That's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So relationships, uh, it's either it's mandatory or optional. You have to choose your relationship, but according to the statement that is given. 
if we are going to take a mandatory relationship, so with a cross food, when it's optional, we are going to have a one and a zero. This means that it, I can either have a relationship or not. I choose to have a relationship or not. How am I going to represent that? If you are looking at an example of a course and a lecturer, you know that in colleges there are different lecturers who teaches different subjects. It's possible that I am an IT lecturer and there is a subject in accounting which I cannot teach. Therefore, it is not mandatory for me to teach that course. Then it means a lecturer, it's possible that can teach that course. Or I can also teach one of the courses that exist there. It's optional. Why? Because it's not mandatory. It's not a, it's not a force that I have to teach an accounting subject. There are lecturers that can teach accounting subject. There are lecturers that can teach LO, for example. Then it happens that this person is not available. Then they say, okay, Memka, you can please help us with this subject. It's mandatory for me at that moment. But if the lecturer comes back, it's optional because now the person responsible for that course is available. So now, if this is an ITC course, if this is an ITC course, one lecturer can teach or must teach this course because you are hired to teach that course. It's mandatory for you. If they ask you, what are you teaching? I'm teaching ITC. That one is mandatory for me. But if I take another course for that moment, it's optional for me. So we are going to look at a second type of relationship which is one to many. In this point, you'll be able to see how crow's no, the crow's foot notation is represented because we are going to have one this side and many this side. We use the crow's notation because kind of a foot of a bed. So with the chain, it's going to be one to many. If it's optional, this is mandatory, if it's optional, it's going to be one, then with a zero to many causes, and this side is going to be a zero to many, because this side represents the relationship where it's moving from, and this part represents the relationship where it's going. I know it's kind of fun, the one must be there because we are moving this side to that side. Okay, if you are going to represent this, let's change this one to a student. It says that one student can attend many courses. One student can attend many courses. It's a course because he's going to have codes and so on. So depending on the scenario that will be given on that moment, if they can say a student can attend a course because we do have students usually miss classes, so they usually attend this one and miss the other one. If that student may attend the course, that's why you're going to have an optional part. So if the student must attend the course, which is the requirements? Once you register, you must. So there are those courses that I say, I'm going to do it optional. I don't like to attend. Maybe system analysts are attend this, this. You are just making it optional for yourself. But if the scenario says so, a student may because it might it is possible that it's offered online and even in classes so i can choose that's why i may attend that's why it's optional for me now depending on the scenario that will be given okay so now we're going to move to the third one which is going to be many to many so many to many okay we're going to have The side. So if you look at the sign, it most changes from this side. It's going to be many to many. Or we can use a notation of N to M. This depends on the test book that you are using. Remember, we are all using different books. There is a notation of M to M. The other one says N to M. Don't say there is a mistake supposed to be many to many as M. Just this is a symbol differentiated by different books. I've pasted a question on the board which I want us to look at as an example. Bear in mind, it's also from a previous paper, which will assist you to analyze and answer questions. 
It says that at the AFS car hire company, customers can book various vehicles for hire. Each vehicle is serviced at irregular intervals. Vehicles undergo inspections. Each booking is managed by an agent. An agent could manage many bookings. This is a scenario that we are given. If you can check, we have a customer can book various vehicles. Then each vehicle is serviced, we're looking at the way it is, at irregular intervals. Vehicles also undergo inspections. Each booking is managed by an agent. An agent could manage many bookings. So you are going to take an entity one by one, and you're going also to create relationships of age. We have a customer. So I'm going to indicate that be careful of the instructions. It can say that include also the attributes of the entity or do not include the attributes of the entity. But in most cases, be ready to include at least the primary key, okay? We are going to have a customer. And if I'm a customer for the first time, they are going to put me in their database and give me an ID code, which means we are going to have a customer code. Or you can say as the customer ID, this becomes your primary key. In other words, you cannot go and hire a car for me because I have my own ID. Okay, then the second part, you can have a customer name, you can have a surname, just including a few. So they say a customer, what does the customer do? Can book various vehicles, can. Okay, this is a customer. The next thing that the customer does is what? It's a booking, eh? but what? A vehicle. So, okay, vehicle has a name, remember the attribute, and a code or an ID, because now they have put codes on the cars so that you will know that car one is gone, car two is gone, so that a person who comes back must not request for the car which is already hired. Now, we are looking at the relationship between the customer and the vehicle. I cannot always be mandatory to hire your cars. It's either I can or not. So a customer can, it means it's optional for me, ne? Various cars. It's not always that I can hire one car. Maybe I do have a wedding, for example. I can take many cars for a wedding. That is why it's a customer to a vehicle. Many cars will be represented on that. And the optional part is that I can and I cannot. So that is why it's optional for me. We are moving forward. So each vehicle is serviced at the regular intervals. This car must undergo service at regular intervals this one is going to be, it must go for a service or else the cars are not going to last so if you can check the, the relationship between a car and regular service is going to be a one to many now we are moving from that one it says that the same car must also go to what to maintenance you service it and you maintain it. The same vehicle has a relationship with maintenance. A car, which is going to be the cross foot. A car must undergo, it's also, the also part undergoes for inspection. Sorry, it's not maintenance, it's inspection. Sorry for that. Your service, your car is being inspected because all the cars must be ready so that when a customer come to book for a car, it must be in a good state for that customer so that it doesn't give him or her trouble. Then we continue. It says that each booking is managed by an agent. We are introducing a new entity, which is an agent. What does, it, what does an agent do? It makes a booking. A 
And an agent can or cannot make a booking because a customer can or cannot book or hire a car. So this is also one to many. So what does the agent does? He can make bookings and manage many bookings. So remember, who is making a booking? If you can see, we have an agent making a booking. We have a customer hiring for a car. So we have a relationship between the customer and booking because before I get a vehicle, I need to go through booking. Because I also have to, I also have to register my details. I have to make sure that I'm in a database. So a customer does have a relationship with booking. Why? Because from booking, you need to get a car. So you cannot usually use a bridge between this one and bringing it back. Because it's possible that as a customer, I'm coming to make a booking only to find that the car that I need is not there. Or I'm just here to inspect the cars around. That is why a customer can book many or no cars at all. So if you look at the relationship between booking and this one, the agent, I'm going to also determine the types of relationship. A car can be booked or is booked. Okay, I'm just going to bridge it down so that we don't have confusion about the relationships. A vehicle can be booked or cannot be booked. More vehicles can be booked or cannot be booked. But if we are just putting the signs on the entities without explanation or just ways to link them, it really doesn't little bit make sense because a person said, okay, it's one too many one to zero, what is happening with the one to many and so on. So it's then that we introduce relationship words or we are going to communicate these entities together. Now, a customer, we are just going to use single words. A customer, okay, this is customer books, a vehicle or hire, let's use a proper English, because books, someone will think, okay, cars has to do with books. A customer hire a vehicle. A vehicle undergoes service. And of course, a vehicle is inspected. A vehicle is booked. You can simply use words because we are talking to the entities. A customer makes a booking and an agent manages bookings. So these are the relationships that you can create in a customer. Why am I taking time to do this and explaining? Just for a tip for the exam. This question usually carries more marks, which I cannot say how many because the next thing you find a paper that is having at least 10 marks, you're saying she said more than 20 or so. It depends, but it weighs a lot. Take in mind, you will find a scenario, you need to understand the keywords and be able to extract entities, therefore create relationships and give them meaning by giving each relationship words. Okay, that's it with relationships, cardinalis, and of course, entities. So before I close this lesson, I just want us to understand something. Just for the theory part, a relationship can either be strong or weak. Okay, just going to write those two things here. A strong relationship and a weak relationship. Which entities have a strong, which one have a weak? With a strong relationship is when an entity exists because of another entity. Just give a simple example. If you have a building and all of a sudden we have a venue. These are two entities. So now if you can check, you cannot say you book a venue without a building. A building provides a venue. This one becomes a weak entity because it cannot exist on its own. This one becomes a strong entity 
which maintains a strong relationship with this one. So this one depends on this one. This one can exist on its own. It can be a building, and you cannot book it. can be a building without being made to venues and so on. But in order to have a venue, you need a building. That's why you're saying this one becomes a strong entity. The other one becomes a weak. We usually use those funny ways to say, this one is a parent, this one is a child. There is no existence of this one without a parent. Okay, that's it with today's lesson of ERD diagrams, relationships, cardinalis, and links between relationships. Thank you for attending this lesson with me today. And for more information and questioning, you can go to our website, our college website, which is www.ethanzenicollege.co.za. We have our social platforms there. You are going to find our Facebook, our Twitter. You can post a question there. We'll assist each other or any comments about what we did today. Thank you.